Hey guys, welcome to Teen Entertainment Network, or TIN. I'm Josh along with TIN vlogger Krista, and today we are talking to music star Brielle. This girl is a face to watch in the music industry. Her songs has been, has been featured on MTV already, and get this, she even charted on Billboard charts. She is gearing up to release her LP titled Ready for War. We are really excited to talk to you, so how's it going? Good, how are you? Great, thanks for asking. Um, so can you describe yourself in three words? Yes, um, I would say I am very bubbly, imaginative, and focused. Nice. So what would you say is the inspiration behind your music? I take inspiration from everything in my life, um, my personal relationships, um, anything that goes on in the world that I read on the news or become interested in. And lately, I have been taking inspiration from different books that I've been reading. So, anywhere. Yeah, that's neat. Um, What's your favorite book? Um, my favorite book right now, um, I know it's a, it's a crazy book, but my favorite book right now is Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I think how you say his name. <laughs> Um, and I'm also reading Ada or Adore by him right now, too. So his books are very uh, intense. <laughs> <laughs> you have to check those out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when did your passion for music begin? I honestly don't remember not having a passion for music. I, ever since I was little, really since I was born, all I have done is sing and dance, and that's all I've wanted to do, um, and that's all that's ever been in my heart to do, so... Yeah. Um, so how would you describe the sound of your music? My music is very pop-centric, um, but unique. With certain songs, I can, like, distinguish uh, some other artists, like, oh, this song has, like, a little bit of this artist. But as a whole, with all of my music together that I write, I feel it is – it offers a different spin on pop than um, what's very common, I think. Right. It's always to be different and stand out. I like how you do that. Um, so um, are you, you are gearing up to release your LP titled Ready for War. Can you tell us more about your um, thought pre process when going into creating this LP? Well, at the beginning, or when before I, I guess in writing all the tracks on the LP, I wasn't focused on a specific theme, like, it's going to be ready for war. I was just writing whatever whatever I wrote, whatever came out, and whatever I loved. And all of the songs, cumulatively, were a theme of, of love and, and war and fighting for what you love and what you believe in. And the title track happens to be Ready for War. And it wasn't until I wrote that song that my whole team and I were like, that needs to be the name of the album because it just makes so much sense. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, do you have a favorite track on the LP? That's really hard to say. Some days I can say yes, that um, I love playing with danger or wasted or stuck, or but it changes all the time. And some days I, they're like my kids, I feel really guilty picking a favorite. So, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Good answer. So, um, how does it feel to be on the Billboard charts, and what was your reaction to that news? It's really exciting, and I didn't believe it um, when I first got an email that said, it had actually had the photo, I think, of like my number 10, Av Avalanche number 10, and I was like, wait, like you're kidding, is that like April <laughs> Fool's, like what? And then when they told me over the phone, oh yeah, Avalanche is number 10, I was like, are you sure they didn't mean 100, 1,000, <laughs> like, is that a so I was, it was pretty cool. I was like, what? <laughs> I would have been freaking awesome. out. Like, I would have been freaking out. Yeah. I don't really not know how, what to do with myself. Happy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats. That's great. Thank you. So, like, looking at all of your success, such as Billboard, and being featured on MTV, what is your biggest accomplishment thus far? Um, that's hard to say. I, um, I think it's much harder than anything else to stay true to myself and to to keep in mind the reason that I got into the music business and the reason that 
I sing and perform and write and it's all for the love and and sometimes there's so much other stuff that goes on business wise and and it just gets kind of yucky because it the focus isn't always unfortunately on the music and so it's I'm mo most proud about myself that I have been able to keep that focus and and uh, know why I am in this business to begin with so Great. Good for you. Um, so what's your favorite part about a live performance, if you have one? There are so many. Um, <laughs> and when I perform live, there reaches a point where sometimes, this sounds crazy, but I literally black out a little bit. And I am so <laughs> absorbed in the moment of the song, that, and I, I live, live what I'm singing, and that's my favorite part. I don't really remember. Afterwards, I'm always like, "Wait, did I did I sing it right? Did I did I do it right? Uh, you know?" And, and I always did, but it's just because I was so into um, the performance, and that's my favorite part: being one with everything. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you go up there, do you have um, a different person you turn into? Like, do you have an alter ego when you perform? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not like Sasha Fierce and Beyonce, but um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I uh, I always uh, attribute that to me being a Gemini. I say that my other half of my Gemini comes out because <laughs> I like that. I'm really, like more laid back in in person, and when I perform, it's like it's like an animal. But <laughs> not, not too crazy. <laughs> so, like, um, is there anyone in this music industry whose industry whose career you actually look up to? Yeah, I um I've always been a fan of Justin Timberlake. Not only because I'm obsessed with his music, but because um, I admire what he's so, what he has done um, in terms of business strategy and the way he's handled himself and um, the way he's progressed and, and maintained in the business without any crazy drama or storyline. Like he's just him, and it's his talents, and I really admire that. Mm -hmm. Definitely true. Um, do you have any advice for aspiring teens that are trying to get into the music industry? Yeah, um, I think the most important part is that you have to make sure you really, really want it. You want to be, it's a hard business, tough business, and, um, and you have to want it to the point where you're willing to give up everything you've ever known, basically, like relationships, stability, sleep. Um, <laughs> anything, and you have to live and breathe it, and even if still, after that, you've decided you still want it, I feel like persistence is the key, because no is a word that is very common to hear, like, <laughs> you know, no, not now, the time's not right, this isn't, we're looking for something else, not exactly what you're bringing to the table, and, and you just got to keep going, because if, it's kind of like, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, so. Right. Well, great advice. It's awesome. So we're actually going to move on to some um, fashion questions. And I can tell you love it, judging by your amazing fur vest. Is it a vest or a coat? <laughs> it's a coat. And it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so flashy and funky. All right. So um, what is your definition of fashion? Well, that's interesting. I, um, I feel that fashion can be anything. Um, but I feel like fashion is a, m a moment, a single moment, whereas I feel like style is a lifetime, and style is what you choose to do with fashion, and it is your own lifestyle. So it's like, I think they go hand in hand, and um, yeah, I love fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe your personal style? My personal style, I, uh, I love vintage. And um, I love garments and looks that are that are very edgy, but transcend time. That don't have like, oh, that's from the '80s. Oh, that's you know, have a have a time stamp on them. Um, and I try my very best to dress um, in a way where um, very classically, where my looks will still look good in I don't know, 20, 40 years, because um, I just I love, love vintage. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you have any inspiration behind your style? Um, I used to not know. I used to think that inspiration when it came to, because I'm also a fashion designer. I uh, 
Really? I design, yeah, a lot. Actually, you can see in the back. I don't know if you see. There's a couple figures. Yeah. Uh -huh. back there. Um, That's so and, cool. Uh, yeah, right there. Um, and I used to think that it was just whatever I thought of, but lately, I actually have noticed when I write and when I design at the same time, the music I write and my designs go hand in hand. So I feel like my inspiration with fashion comes from the same place that it does with music and it's just whatever I'm feeling and whatever I'm going through in that time of life and I draw from everything really. Great. So you just do it like all. You're a fashion designer, <laughs> a singer, what else can you do? <laughs> I dance. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. So how would you describe the difference between your own like everyday street style and then performance style? My everyday street style is definitely more relaxed. Um, I, I'll wear like jeans and, um, I'll wear jeans a lot, which I would never wear on stage usually. I just, I love dressing up. Oh my goodness. I love dresses and sparkly things and heels. So my, uh, my performance style and my street style are very similar. It's just my performance is amped up. It's like times a hundred. <laughs> Do you have um, a favorite fashion piece in your closet? That's hard. I um, I like to choose everything that I buy, um, and I it's so weird, but it's like I have a personal connection with each piece, and I don't. It's like my songs. I don't want to choose a favorite because I'd feel guilty. Choose. <laughs> I'm like you're my babies. I don't. You know, I take care of you. <laughs> I can't choose my favorite. <laughs> awesome. Um. <laughs> So here at I Am, we run an interactive anti-bullying campaign all year round to encourage teens to be the ones who take the ultimate stand up against bullying, and it's um, called Be the One Who. So what are your thoughts on bullying, and what is your advice to teens that are being bullied? Bullying is a really tough thing to go through. I went through bullying in high school, middle school, um, just because I wasn't exactly what everybody else thought I should be. And it's hard. Um, it's amazing that you have an anti-bullying campaign. That's so cool. At, at my high school, there was a anti-bullying club, um, which it was really <laughs> cool. They would put post-it yeah. notes around the school that said really fun things. But um, yeah, um, it was hard. I when I would be bullied, I didn't stand up for myself. I would just kind of try to brush it off or just like, you know, ignore it. And, um, but when I was older, towards the later years of high school, when I would see somebody be bullied, I, knowing what it would feel like, um, would start to, you know, stand up for them. And if it wasn't for me, at least, you know, it, it hurt me more to see somebody else bullied. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's hard when you are the one being bullied. But, yeah. um, and I didn't do a good job of that myself, to stand up for myself. Um, but it's just, I think you just have to know that those that are bullying you are the, are the ones that need, need, I don't know, love and support and, and something m the most. And, and that you're not what everybody says you are, if that makes sense. No, it does. That's great. Great advice. Great advice. So we're going to move on to a lighter subject. We're going to play a fun game we call Rapid Fire, and we're going to give you 30 seconds on the clock to answer all the questions that we have for you. Now, hopefully you can answer all the questions, but okay. um, you get 30 <laughs> seconds. So the first thing that comes to your head, just let us know, and we're about to start. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Um, what is your favorite thing to do aside from music? Um, fashion, drawing, designing. <laughs> All-time favorite movie. Love and Other Drugs. Miley Cyrus or Ariana Grande? Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Guilty pleasure? Um, chocolate. Go-to karaoke song? Anything Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> favorite designer? Uh, Alexander McQueen. Favorite song right now? Animals Moon 5. <laughs> All right, and that is a 30 seconds, so you got a few in there. You did, you did. good. <laughs> we also had a question on here that said, um, Bruno Mars or Justin Timberlake, so I already know who you were going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All 
All right. So um, here at I Am, we are big advocates on the concept that smart is sexy. You can have the beauty and the brains all at the same time. So what are your thoughts on smart is sexy? Right on. Like, yes. <laughs> um, I think definitely the smarter you are, the more intelligent you are, the, the more wisdom you have about life and about... And, and, and it allows you to have an ease about going through everything and you know how to deal with things that come your way and it's just way better than someone who's not smart so definitely it's sexy <laughs> what are um, three qualities in a guy that you would consider sexy um sense of humor um Likes to read, because I'm obsessed with reading, <laughs> um, and isn't afraid to be crazy or look like a fool, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. a good quality to have. <laughs> Well, uh, it was such a fun like talking to you today. That is all the questions that we have. But we're not about to let you leave and not sing anything for us. <laughs> so <right>. um, <laughs> can you just sing a few like bars or something of just anything? You can sing whatever you want. Yeah, okay. Um, I have a song out, Catch a Star for You, that came out a year and a half ago. So here's a little bit of Catch. <laughs> Why am I painted inside of a box? Finding my way out is hard in the dark. Reaching to search for the light on the wall. Why can't you just turn it on? Come and set me free, illuminate my world. You'll see that I can touch the sky and catch a star for you. Open up the dream, imagine all that life could be after I touch the sky and catch a star for you. <laughs> Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want it to stop. Oh. <laughs> well, you can just keep singing for us. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, if you want to just keep going, sing the whole LP, you can totally do that. <laughs> I would not mind, honestly. Fun. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us. Um, make sure you be on the lookout for Brielle's LP, Ready for War, which should be here in April, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So um, also follow her on Twitter at Brielle underscore music and follow us at I am. And be sure to check us out next next time on 10. Bye, guys. Bye.